Finally, in, uh, in looking at the Middle East, we want to examine the politics and relations and international relations of two of the largest producers and holders of oil and gas deposits in this region, Saudi Arabia in the west and Iran in the east. If we compare Saudi Arabia and Iran, in some ways they seem the polar opposites. Saudi Arabia is Arab, that is to say an Arab-speaking uh, population, whereas Iran is Persian or Farsi-speaking. Saudi Arabians follow a Sunni branch of Islam, whereas Iranians are mostly Shiites. Saudi Arabia is a, governed by a hereditary monarchy, Iran by an Islamic Republic. Saudi Arabia largely supports the maintenance of the international status quo in an effort to maximize their economic interests and their political stability whereas Iran is a revolutionary change agent seeking to redress the imbalance of international power. Saudi Arabia, because of its status quo orientation, has been largely pro-American, relying heavily on U.S. Uh, military assistance and looking to the U.S. for political stability and economic development, whereas Iran has been the leader of an anti-U.S. or anti-American uh, mission uh, in the region and around the world. Looking separately at these countries, first at Saudi Arabia. Saudi Arabia is a nation state established in 1932 by King Ibn Saud, who's after whom Saudi Arabia is named. Saudi Arabia means the Arabia that belongs to the hereditary monarchical family of the Sauds. It also draws its identity from a conservative Sunni brand of Islam known as Wahhabi that predates the formation of the Saudi Arabian state but forms a an alliance between the Wahhabi clerical leadership and the monarchical secular leadership of the state. Saudi Arabia is home to Mecca, the holiest city of Islam, and the site of the annual pilgrimage or Hajj, which brings together Muslims from all over the world. The backbone of the economy of Saudi Arabia since the 1930s has been its production of petroleum. Here in 1945, King Saud and then President Franklin Delano Roosevelt uh, meet in the Eastern Mediterranean uh, to seal what is to become one of the most important post-war alliances in the region uh, between the United States and Saudi Arabia. Early in their history, Petroleum production uh, from Saudi Arabia was controlled by the Arabian American Oil Company, or Aramco, which was subsequently nationalized by Saudi Arabia and now is now known as Saudi Aramco. The current king, Abdullah, one of the many sons of Ibn Saud, who remains uh, uh, king, king of, or monarch of Saudi Arabia, has sought to maintain a good relationship with the United States. This relationship was tested during the fall of President Mubarak in Egypt, a, an event that the United States in a sense permitted and even applauded, whereas the Saudis viewed it as a threat to the stability of the regimes throughout the region, including their own, uh, and, and uh, were not pleased to see the United States stand by uh, while President Mubarak fell. So the relationship between Saudi Arabia has been tested, but remains a backbone of the foreign policy of both countries. Going to the other side of the Gulf, however, into Iran, we see a very different situation. 
Iran, like Saudi Arabia, was ruled by a hereditary monarch, most recently the Shah of Iran, on the throne from 1941 until his ouster in 1979. The Shah was replaced in the Iranian Revolution of 1979 when the Ayatollah Khomeini returned from exile to lead an Islamic takeover of the government uh, in Iran. The Ayatollah Khomeini remained the supreme leader for the last 10 years of his life until his death in 1989. He has since been replaced by a series of supreme leaders, the most recent of whom, Ali Khamenei, remains the most powerful figure within, the, within Iran. He is selected by a group of senior Shiite clerics and holds ultimate power in the, in the political regime. Hence, it is an Islamic republic. In the secular sphere, there is an elected president of Iran, but the elected government of Iran remains subservient to the clerical leadership. Perhaps the most dramatic and famous, or from some point of view, infamous presidents was Mahmoud Ahmadinejad, president of Iran from 2005 to 2013 who distinguished himself as a firebrand of Iranian nationalism and of uh, criticism of the United States and the West. Ahmadinejad stepped down after two tours in office in 2013 and has been replaced in an election by President Hassan Rouhani, uh, who has uh, since his election in 2013, uh, come out as a more moderate or compromising figure, uh, promising uh, negotiations uh, with the West on the most critical issue dividing them, the disposition of the Iranian uh, nuclear program. Finally, if we look across the Middle East, we see some of the major issues that are generating uh, conflict and controversy in that region, as well as dividing uh, Saudi Arabia uh, on the one hand and Iran on the other. First, most dramatically, has been the civil war in Syria that pits the government of Bashar al-Assad, a member of the Alawite uh, sect, a a subgroup of Shiites against the resistance to his rule by a largely Sunni uh, insurgency. This uprising or conflict has divided Syria for the last two years from its uh, inception in 2011 up till the present time and has also brought in, in into this conflict Iran on the side of the Bashar al-Assad government, a Shiite Iranian country supporting a Alawite or Shiite minority uh, leadership uh, in the government of uh, Syria against this Sunni-dominated insurgency uh, supported by the Sunni Wahhabi regime in Saudi Arabia. We see a similar division in Iraqi politics next door. In 2003, the overthrow of the Saddam Hussein uh, regime uh, led to a growing split in Iraq between the Shiite majority in the east allied to Iran and a Sunni minority in the west more amenable to uh, support from Saudi Arabia and other Sunni uh, states. The withdrawal of the United States in 2011 left the government of uh, President al-Maliki, himself a Shiite, supported by Iran against this Sunni insurgency. 
generating much of the violence and conflict that has plagued uh, Iraq from that time forward and increasingly pits Iran on one side against Saudi Arabia on the other. The Israeli-Palestinian dispute has also been a, a source of tension between the two parties. On the one side, Iran, particularly under the preceding president, Mahmoud Ahmadinejad, was the most outspoken critic of Israel, in fact, doubting, expressing public doubts about the existence of the Holocaust and championing the cause of the Palestinians, providing support to the most militant resistance, Palestinian resistance, the Hamas, as well as to the uh, resist the Shiite uh, forces in Lebanon known as Hezbollah, also uh, uh, a foe of the Israeli regime. Saudi Arabia can hardly be called an ally of Israel, but it has, along with the United States, Jordan, Egypt, and other regimes in the region that have sought a modus vivendi with Israel, has been much more amenable uh, to allowing the status quo uh, to persist. Finally, perhaps the most explosive issue in Iranian politics has been the nuclear program. Iran claims that its nuclear program is for peaceful purposes and that it is only trying to develop nuclear capacities for research, medical, and energy production. Forces on the outside, particularly in the United States and in Western Europe, are skeptical about the Iranian claims and want to make sure that Iranian nuclear development is monitored and controlled to ensure that there is no diversion of this effort to the production of nuclear weapons. This issue is of particular importance to Saudi Arabia and other Arab states in the region because if Iran should get nuclear weapons, this would raise the whole question of the credibility of the American nuclear umbrella and open the possibility that other states in the region, such as Saudi Arabia, might themselves choose to develop nuclear weapons. On all these fronts, in Syria, Iraq, the Israeli-Palestinian issue, and on the nuclear development issue, Saudi Arabia and Iran remain chief rivals in a region where oil and gas wealth drives much of the politics.